Have you ever stopped to think that the world we live in is literally built on top of a grey powder? It might sound exaggerated, but cement is the silent foundation of everything, from the house you live in to hospitals, bridges, highways, and even airports. What's fascinating is that almost no one really knows how it's made. Have you ever seen a cement factory from the inside? The machines that crush rocks as if they were stale bread? Or the massive furnaces that melt everything at over 1000 degrees? The truth is that the process is so extreme, so intense, it feels like something out of a sci-fi movie, but it's happening right now, probably not too far from where you are. And the most shocking part isn't the size of the machines, but how much we depend on this material every single day without even realizing it. Most people think cement is just sand and glue, but what happens inside a Semex factory could surprise even the most curious minds. Behind every bag you see stacked at a construction store, there's an entire engineering system that starts with rock explosions and ends with surgical precision. And what if I told you that all of this is controlled by sensors, robots, and almost autonomous systems? That we're entering an era where cement isn't just manufacture, it's almost thought. If you're like me and often find yourself wondering, how do they even make that? Or, who came up with that crazy idea? Then you're in the right place. Imagine a mountain being blown apart. That's how the cement making process begins. It looks brutal, but it's a precisely calculated operation. Tons of limestone rock are detonated with surgical accuracy, all to extract the main ingredient of cement. The blasted rocks are loaded onto giant trucks with wheels taller than a person and taken to the first station of the plant. There, they're crushed with brute force by massive grinders that chew through stone as if it were old bread. Once crushed, the rocks turn into a coarse powder that looks like rock flour. This material is mixed with clay, sand, and in some cases, even recyclable industrial waste. The goal is to create a blend rich in silica, alumina, and essential oxides for cement production. This mixture then enters a rotary kiln, a huge metallic tube that rotates slowly while heating the material to over 1,400 degrees Celsius. That's hot enough to melt almost anything. Inside the kiln, a hidden transformation happens. Calcination. The mixture becomes what's called clinker. The clinker exits the kiln glowing red hot like embers from a furnace. It's rapidly cooled with jets of cold air and then mixed with gypsum and other additives to give it specific properties. After that, everything goes into enormous mills that grind the material down into a fine powder the cement we all know. The final product is stored in silos, ready to be packaged and shipped around the world. But this is only the beginning of the story, because what seems like a simple transformation from stone to powder actually carries centuries of engineering behind it. It all starts with limestone, a rock that might look ordinary at first glance, but hides the secret of the modern world's strength. Limestone is found in abundance in the Earth's crust, usually in sedimentary formations that have built up over millions of years. To extract it, entire quarries are blasted open. The explosions can be heard from miles away, but what few people know is that this is the first step in a process that will eventually become skyscrapers, highways, and bridges. It's like turning the skeletons of ancient mountains into the foundations of entire cities. Besides limestone, cement requires other ingredients that complete the perfect formula. Clay, silica, iron, and gypsum. Clay is collected from deposits and added because it's rich in aluminum and silica, both key elements for cement strength. Silica and iron come from specific mineral sources, and sometimes even from recycled industrial residues, something most people have no idea about. In fact, modern plants are starting to use ash from power plants and slag from steel furnaces to reduce the environmental impact of cement production. Gypsum only comes in at the very end of the process, but it plays a crucial role. It controls the drying time. Without it, cement would harden so quickly that you wouldn't even have time to apply it. Each of these materials travels miles to reach the cement plants, like pieces of a puzzle coming from different places. A puzzle that, when perfectly assembled, gives birth to one of the most used materials on Earth. But why does the world depend so much on this grey powder? You might not think about it often, but almost everything around you contains cement. The house you live in, the sidewalk you walk on, the hospital that saves lives, the school where children learn. Cement is the invisible skeleton of our cities. It's in the structures that hold up bridges, highways, stadiums, dams, airports, and even the foundations of the world's tallest skyscrapers. Its importance is so massive that without it, modern civilization simply wouldn't exist as we know it. But this story began long before glass towers and giant overpasses. The first records of cement-like materials date back to ancient Egypt, where a mixture of mud, sand, and gypsum was used to bind stone blocks in the pyramids. Later, the Romans took construction to a whole new level. 
They created the famous Opus Cementitium, a primitive cement made from volcanic ash that shaped monuments like the Pantheon, which still stands almost 2,000 years later. Even in its most basic form, cement already had the power to defy time itself. Today, more than 4 billion tons of cement are produced every year. It's the second most consumed material on Earth, right after water. What began as a handcrafted technique has become one of the main pillars of global infrastructure. In times of rapid urbanization, it's no longer just about building. It's about enduring, protecting, and evolving. And the more humanity advances, the more it relies on this quiet, gray powder that silently holds up the modern world. But has all this dependence come with a cost? Inside a cement factory, the sound never stops. It's like stepping into an orchestra of heavy machinery, where every piece of equipment has its own melody. The crusher shakes the ground, the kiln turns like a burning metal giant, and the mills roar without rest. Speaking of kilns, here's a fun fact. They can reach temperatures above 1,400 degrees Celsius. That's hotter than the lava in many volcanoes. It's in this extreme heat that the mixture transforms into clinker, a process that can only happen through precisely engineered control. The most advanced cement factories in the world already operate with nearly autonomous systems. Robots and mechanical arms feed the kilns, Sensors monitor the chemical composition of materials in real time, and even drones are used to map limestone piles with surgical precision. It may sound like science fiction, but this is daily life in modern cement plants. These technologies not only boost efficiency, but also reduce the risk of accidents and minimize environmental impact. The fewer human errors, the higher the quality, and the safer the structures that depend on it. Another fascinating detail is the sheer scale of the machinery involved. A single rotary kiln can measure up to 200 meters long, bigger than two football fields. The mills used to grind the clinker into powder can weigh hundreds of tons. This massive operation runs with incredible precision. Even a slight deviation in grinding can affect the final strength of the cement. And all of it must happen with minimal downtime, because the world outside doesn't wait. But was it always this advanced? In the beginning, making cement was pure manual labor. Before machines, everything was done by hand crushing stones, mixing ingredients, controlling fire with wood and coal. Back in the 18th century, the process was primitive. The kilns were simple pits lined with bricks and heated with wood. Workers mixed everything using shovels and hoes, producing a weak, unstable cement that could take days to harden. Still, it was used in small constructions like wells, walls, and water reservoirs. Everything changed in the 19th century. In 1824, a British bricklayer named Joseph Aspdin patented a new kind of cement inspired by the stones of Portland Island. He used enclosed kilns, higher heat, and a more precise blend of clay and limestone. This improved the material's strength and gave birth to what we now know as Portland cement. During the Industrial Revolution, the process became mechanized. Steam-powered mills, continuous drying systems, and rotating mixers transformed production. Over time, factories began to resemble the ones we see today larger, safer, and faster. Cement started being produced on an industrial scale, fueling the explosive growth of cities. It was the birth of modern engineering. Watching an industrial plant operate today feels like witnessing an evolved version of that past, faster, cleaner, and more efficient. But behind all this progress lies an even older story, one that began long before Aspden and his revolutionary formula. Cement as we know it today was officially born in 1824. That was when Joseph Aspden, a British bricklayer, registered the patent for what he called Portland cement. He gave it that name because once it hardened, the material resembled the stones used in the buildings of Portland Island in southern England. But even though that marked the technical birth of modern cement, ancient civilizations had already been using primitive versions of it thousands of years earlier. The Egyptians, for example, mixed gypsum and sand to bind stone blocks in the pyramids, the Romans developed an even more impressive version, using pozzolana, a volcanic ash, mixed with lime to build temples, aqueducts, and harbors. This Roman cement was so durable that many of those structures are still standing today. What Aspden did was standardize the process. He found the perfect ratio of limestone and clay, burned the mixture at high temperatures, and ground it into a fine, consistent powder. That innovation changed engineering forever. Portland cement quickly spread across Europe and soon the entire world. It was adopted in railways, dams, public buildings, and later skyscrapers. What started as a simple attempt to make a better brick mortar became the foundation of global urbanization. And the most surprising part, Aspden had no idea he was changing history. He just wanted a stronger material to lay bricks. Little did he know that from that moment on, the entire world would be built upon his invention. But who exactly was this man behind the discovery? Joseph Aspden was a simple bricklayer from the city of Leeds, England. 
No fame, no titles, just a deep curiosity and a drive to improve his craft. He spent hours experimenting with different proportions of lime, clay and water, trying to create a mortar that would dry faster and become stronger. That's how, in 1824, he came up with what would later be known as Portland cement, a mixture that, once hardened, became as solid as stone but as moldable as fresh clay. Aspden had no idea what kind of impact his invention would have. He developed the formula in a small homemade furnace fueled by coal. His son, William, later refined the technique and expanded its production. Together they ushered in a new era of construction. What's interesting is that, at the time, many traditional engineers frowned upon this modern powder. They believed natural stone was more reliable. But over time, cement proved its strength, not through words, but through concrete results. Today, it's hard to imagine a world without Aspden's invention. His discovery transformed architecture and engineering and literally became the foundation of entire cities. His name might not appear on every building plaque, but it's present in every wall, bridge, and foundation we use every day. And to think it all began in a small British home, with an improvised furnace and a bricklayer who refused to settle for less. Yet his invention didn't stop there. It kept evolving, gaining new forms and uses that Aspden could have never imagined. Did you know that cement can be as strong as steel, depending on its formula and how it's used? In some underwater constructions, it's made to withstand extreme pressure and resist saltwater corrosion for decades. And there's more. Some modern types of cement can actually heal themselves. Tiny bacteria are added to the mix, and when small cracks appear, these bacteria activate and fill the gaps. It's almost like intelligent concrete that senses damage and repairs itself. It sounds like science fiction, but it's already being used in bridges and tunnels in countries like the Netherlands and Japan. Here's another fun fact. The first modern building to use Portland cement on a large scale was a house built in England in 1851, and it still stands today. Since then, cement use has skyrocketed. Today, China leads global production, accounting for more than half of all cement made on the planet. It's followed by India, Vietnam, and the United States. These countries rely on cement as both an engine of urban growth and a symbol of economic power. Wherever there's cement, there's progress. But there's also a growing environmental debate. Cement production is one of the largest sources of carbon dioxide emissions on Earth. That's because the calcination process releases CO2, and the kilns consume enormous amounts of energy. For this reason, factories around the world are racing to develop cleaner alternatives, such as capturing carbon emissions or replacing coal with biomass fuels. Cement may have started as a silent revolution, but today it's also one of the world's biggest environmental challenges. And even after all this innovation, there's still one last crucial step before it reaches you. Once the cement is ready, it's stored in massive silos, protected from moisture and prepared for distribution. From there, it takes two main paths. Part of it is packed into reinforced craft paper bags, usually weighing about 50 kilograms each. The rest is shipped in bulk directly to concrete mixers or mobile silos at construction sites. The packaging process is automated and impressive. Robots fill, weigh, and seal each bag in seconds, while conveyor belts stack them onto pallets like an industrial game of Tetris. Those pallets are lifted by forklifts and loaded onto trucks that travel hundreds of miles to reach the final customers. Timing is everything. Cement can't be exposed to humidity or left sitting too long, or it will harden and lose its properties. That's why every step of logistics is carefully synchronized. Some shipments even use sensors to track temperature and vibration, ensuring that the material arrives intact. It's an invisible operation, but absolutely essential to keep construction projects running on schedule. When it finally arrives at the site or the supply store, cement begins a new journey, becoming part of something bigger. Mixed with sand, gravel, and water, it turns into concrete, shaping floors, walls, and entire dreams. Engineers, builders, and workers join forces to transform that gray powder into structure. And the most fascinating part? Most of them don't even realize the long path that cement traveled before reaching their hands. A journey filled with heat, pressure, precision, and history. But what if this entire process revealed something even deeper? It's fascinating to realize that behind a simple bag of cement stacked at your local store lies such an intense journey, made of explosions, extreme heat, precise mixtures, and perfectly timed logistics. All of that effort, just so someone can build a wall, raise a home, or start a dream from scratch. Cement isn't just a gray powder, it's the invisible foundation of our daily lives. And yet, few people ever stop to imagine how it gets there. Maybe it's because we're surrounded by, on sidewalks, in bridges, in hospitals, in schools. And we've forgotten that behind every solid structure there's a massive, unseen process. 
What seems ordinary today is actually one of the greatest achievements of modern engineering, and the more we understand how it all works, the more we begin to value what silently holds our world together. Now tell me, where in your city do you see cement every day? Write it down in the comments, tell us your city and your country. And of course, if this video taught you something new today, leave a like and subscribe to the channel.